All right, hey guys, I'm Desiree Lindsay. I am the Libertarian candidate for U.S. Congress, Texas District 25. Um, I uh, first of all want to say thank you to the awesome activists over at Ask a Libertarian for doing this for us. I think it's really cool. Um, you know, we can stay on top of uh, what's going on throughout the country and um, you know, I know for me that uh, I, I love keeping up with other candidates. So anyway, I like that I get to watch these and I like that I get to do one. So thank you very much. Um, I'm really excited about this and um, just kind of a little bit of background right now. Um, this is my first campaign. I really didn't want to run for office at all. Um, it's kind of a I love campaigns. I usually am in, in the background though. So um, I've worked with a lot of candidates since I first joined this party, which was back in, officially in 2013. Um, I don't know. Let's see. I was a county chair for about five and a half years. Um, that was a lot of fun. I love recruiting. So I loved that. I really did. But all things must evolve so um, now I'm shifting my, my focus more towards uh, you know activism and uh, campaigns and I especially love activist candidates so uh, right now I'm actually working with uh, Clayton Hunt who's running for House District 145 that's in Houston Texas I'm also working with Brian Ellison, who's running for Congressional District 8 in Michigan. Um, activist candidates, love them. We worked with, Clayton and I both worked with uh, Corey Watkins when he ran for the uh, governor nomination here in Texas. That was a lot of fun. Um, Corey uh, is just nonstop energizer bunny kind of guy and that's actually why Clayton and I are running right now so um, we really enjoyed working on his campaign and we enjoy uh, watching him just spread the message of freedom everywhere he goes it's a beautiful thing so um, anyway I'm kind of rambling if there's uh, anybody that has any questions I don't mind rambling I'm good at it so <laughs> um, but it is an AMA so feel free to ask me anything um, let's see I do not see any questions yet so I will just keep rambling <laughs> um, I am running like I said for US Congress in Texas District 25 um, my three kind of major issues are ending all wars that includes the war on drugs the domestic war against the uh, the populace by the police um, and any of, of course foreign wars where we um, bomb brown people for looking different and because we want their stuff so um, I just want peace just peace <laughs> and um, I'm also running on an open borders platform I believe that we should be welcoming to our neighbors from anywhere that they want to um, wherever you want to travel go so um, I think that uh, if people want to come and contribute to your neighborhood, you, you let them. <laughs> I mean, I don't see why it's such a big issue, why we have this divide uh, that's being kind of foisted upon us by government. So um, the other major issue is to abolish the death penalty. I think it's morally reprehensible and it's barbaric and it's time that we stop and it's a huge thing here in Texas so um, as I'm sure most of you are aware we are pretty famous for uh, how many people we put to death it's really disgusting and um, Clayton Hunt asks how do you feel about the war on drugs I mean it sucks you've got people that that actually don't hurt anyone that are sitting in prison and their lives are completely destroyed forever. Um, families are, are, are split up. You've got uh, somebody who's never going to be able to get a job again. Uh, recently, <laughs> as a lot of my friends know, um, we had a kind of a an incident where we had a brush with that, with uh, 
possibly looking at going to prison for something that is a, a victimless crime. I, I don't think that uh, anybody deserves that. And it, it, as far as looking at it from an economical standpoint, it certainly costs a lot more than it brings in. So I, you know, it's just all around, all, all the way around disgusting to me. Um, Jacob Harper, what brought you into the Liberty Movement? Um, initially, initially Ron Paul did. Um, I was really intrigued with the branding, the revolution with love backwards in the branding, and uh, that really spoke to me. So I started researching him and watching some of his speeches, and um, I kind of was like keeping it from my husband. I didn't want him to know I was getting into politics at all, and then it turned out he was actually kind of also um, discovering Ron Paul for himself. Um, and we just kind of took the ball and ran with it. So uh, that was back in 2011 and in 2018. I mean, we're pretty much full-blown anarchists. We didn't kind of stop there, but uh, but we're still extremely active in the Libertarian Party. Corey Watkins <laughs> is fighting for freedom somewhat addictive. Pretty sure Corey knows the answer to that. Um, like I said earlier, he's like the Energizer Bunny. Um, he uh, and he's inspiring, and it is addictive. I mean, he, I don't know how many times I talk to people like you know Brian Ellison. This is his uh, first campaign, and he's like, now that I'm doing this, you know, like I don't even want to do my day job anymore. I just want to do this all the time. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, it's extremely addictive, I, you know, and and we can't stop until we have freedom, and we've got a long ways to go. So. Um, yeah, very addictive. And speaking of Corey Watkins, actually, he got to see some of the fruit of his labor, uh, last night for the first time. He raised some money for a free the weed billboard in Texas, and they're actually about to get a second one as well. But I think it's really cool when you actually get to see the, like, you know, something tangible from all your hard work. Um... Ron Paul is the reason I started to. Yeah, I mean, I think he brought a lot of people in. Um, you know, he he's kind of a rock star to me. <laughs> Daniel Berman, what's your favorite tax? Shut up, Dan. <laughs> Taxation is theft. That's what he wants me to say. I'm sure of it. Um, there is no such thing as a good tax. So, no. <laughs> Okay, Johnny asks, how do you feel about New Jersey putting a blanket stay of prosecution on all marijuana possession charges? That would be great. I did not know that was happening. Very interesting. Um, <laughs> you know, what would be even better would be to release anybody or expunge records, you know, but hey, we'll take any kind of progress we can get, right? If it keeps people out of prison. Um, okay. Josiah Caustic. What document can we provide when fighting state income tax? I called our local tax office and was told there was nothing in the Constitution about income tax. And they told me I needed to provide documentation. What can I provide? Um, that's interesting. Uh, Josiah, I'm not sure if you watch, uh, Daniel Berman's, uh, Taxation is Theft show um he kind of went off recently while he was figuring out getting new equipment and stuff so um but i believe he's about to start ramping it back up but he recently like right before he went off air for a bit just had somebody on his show that addresses that it's it was a really interesting watch a lot of it is super over my head um so i'm not going to to uh tell you i have an answer for you because I don't, um, but that is where you can find it. If you um, if you want to shoot me a message, I can send you a link to that video. Um, just my campaign page is Desiree Lindsay. Uh, it's actually if you just go to the link, it's easier than try to spell my name. Facebook.com/slash Peace and Love Texas. But yeah, I'll make sure to get you that information and anybody else that wants it as well. Um, cause I couldn't tell you. <laughs> 
J. Ramon, what about guns? Oh, this is funny. Um, I mean, I believe in freedom for all. I personally, myself, don't like guns. That doesn't mean that I, um, that I think other people shouldn't have them. Every, it, it, I mean, the basic uh, thing is that we should all have what the government has. I, we have to be able to protect ourselves. So while we are in this system, um, until we achieve maximum freedom, which, you know, anarchy would be great, but, uh, um, yeah, carry what you want. <laughs> I, I don't care. Whatever makes you happy, whatever makes you feel safe. Um, it, and it's funny because, uh, Brian Ellison started the arm the homeless movement. So then Clayton Hunt taking a hint from that was like, arm the immigrants and then you know we've all been kind of trying to go from there like who else is it is a uh, underrepresented and highly disparaged class of people um and I was talking to a friend of mine today who was saying um you know I, I know you talk a lot about psychedelics and stuff like that but you know that is a, a there I would also like it if you said specifically that you also uh, support gun freedoms. And I was like, arm the hippies! <laughs> anyway, it was funny to me. Um, Clayton Hunt, do you back the blue? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, I, I, it's not Mayberry anymore, folks. We all know that now. I mean it. It's just gotten to the point where we're constantly seeing in our, our news feeds on Facebook and uh, on the news on the television, just somebody else has been shot. And for what? You know, I, they're, they're hunting us at this point. I mean, you know, it goes back to what I was saying earlier with ending all wars. I, you know, the police war on civilians. Um, it's, it's a thing. <laughs> we know it. Especially... Uh, Especially if you're black. So, it, I, it's enough. I don't even know what to do about it anymore. I, it's scary. I mean, when you go down the street to, uh, like I'll go down the street less than a mile away to go pick up a 12 pack of beer and I might have passed three cops just going right down the road. I don't feel safe. I feel threatened. So... Eric Van Single asks about the mushrooms. <laughs> Free the shrooms. Um, so, again, Corey Watkins, he, he and a group of fellow activists started the Free the Weed. Um, you know, I want to say initiative, but we don't get ballot initiatives here in Texas. It's an educational initiative. Um, they were working with what used to be Houston Normal. Um, so now Cannabis Reformers of Houston, I believe, LaTanya Whittington was heading that up. She works with them a lot. So, and again, they just got their first billboard. It's really cool. It says, Free the Weed in Texas on a billboard. Like, super awesome. So I thought that the next natural uh, progression would be, you know, since, since marijuana is, or cannabis is, is the best way to say it, is uh, kind of becoming more widely publicly accepted, um... I felt like it might be time to shift the conversation towards psychedelics, uh, especially with all of the new research that's coming out. Um, so I just started a Free the Shrooms initiative with, with some of the fellow activists I work with. Um, there is a Libertarian Party Psychedelic Caucus that was started last year, I believe, but just kind of sat dormant. The person that started it got really busy with... Uh, with other stuff like helping to legalize marijuana in um, Oklahoma. And, um, well, we're getting that ramped up. So if you want to join, it's the Libertarian Party Psychedelic Caucus. We could definitely use some help. We're forming committees right now. Um, we've only had like one call so far. We elected a chair and secretary, so we still need uh, to let more officers and get more people in there getting active and, um, you know, really start going at educating uh, about psychedelics from a libertarian point of view, because I think it's time. So, um, 
And then we also started a page called Free the Shrimps, and that's also on Twitter. So if you want to find us on Facebook or Twitter, just look up Free the Shrimps. You'll find us. And we just got that started, I don't know, a week and a half, two weeks ago. Um, Thomas Dwyer, I'm trying to get my concealed carry, but did a minor crime, so I can't. What can I do? Really? I thought that was just felons who couldn't carry, um, or concealed carry, I guess would be different. Well, I don't know. Get active. <laughs> Demand your rights. Uh, as far as from a legal standpoint, you know, I know plenty of, uh, gun activists I could point you to. It's, I love all freedom, but guns have never really been my issue, so, um, I can uh, try to find somebody to connect you with. Clayton Hunt would be good. Corey Watkins would be good. But if you also want to shoot me a message on my campaign page, the again, the link is facebook.com slash peace and love Texas. Um, I can find out for you. So, Daniel Berman, do you think Bernie Sanders can win? Yeah, <laughs> I do, actually. Uh, you know not in a rigged system, which it is rigged, but I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of strange things happen in politics these days and a lot of kind of, uh, I don't know. I think I'm kind of watching a lot of underdog stories unfold as we speak. So I don't think anything's out of the realm of possibility. Um, you, you know, we all heard about the walk away movement within the Democrat party um, people are getting fed up. I mean, Republicans are fed up. They've got Trump as their president. Democrats are fed up. They didn't want Hillary. Um, some of them did, sure, but I, I, yeah, I think Bernie could shock us. <laughs> I think he could pull something out. Um, I don't know. I don't, I don't never say never. And I'm really hoping we're watching the existing political system that we are used to um, I'm hoping that we're watching it implode in front of our eyes right now. Okay. Dan Poindexter, how do you feel about illegal immigration? I don't think any immigration should be illegal. So, um, I, I feel like people should be able to travel freely. I think they should be able to, uh, go where they choose to improve their lives, improve the lives of their family. For some people that is coming to the United States, I know some people that are Americans that have moved to Mexico or, or moved somewhere else. So you just go where you feel you can um, best live out the quality of your life. So um, I don't believe immigration should be illegal at all. JC Cook asks, how do you feel about homeschooling? Um, it's preferable. I We homeschooled my son Jacob, who's now 21. He went to public school um, till he was in fifth grade. And we were just really disappointed with the quality of education he was getting. So we uh, were finally in a position to where we could homeschool him, which was, which was fortunate. I mean, you do have to kind of change your lifestyle a bit in order to make it happen. But we did. And um, I, my friend Christy has five kids. She homeschools. Her oldest daughter started college at the age of 14. I mean, that's not my son's story. He, my son has Asperger's. It's a way different story. Um, so homeschooling was actually more beneficial for him. But, you know, it was also, it's also been more beneficial for my friend and, and her kids. And, um, you know, again, she's fortunate to where she can actually, you know, stay home and do that. But if you make sacrifices, you can do that. I know it's really hard, especially in a single parent household. But I think that if you hook up with some of your neighbors or start some sort of a co-op, um, I, I think that it could work. And I think that more people should do it. it, it at this point, I mean, our, our public education system is so broken and it really just serves to, um, to indoctrinate rather than educate. J.C. Cook also asks that, that you talk about your principles and how they differ, how they differ from purported principles of major party candidates. Um, I, yeah, our principles are everything to us in this party. 
I mean, and it's not always a popular thing. <laughs> um, it, as far as the people in, in uh, we're trying to change it where we don't say major parties anymore, we're, we say old parties. <laughs> um, I don't think they have principles, which, you know, he did say purported. So, um, we've all watched House of Cards, I'm sure, and we know it's pretty close to reality. It's definitely not fiction. So, um, you know, I'd like to think that libertarians don't lie, steal, or cheat to get ahead. Um, you know, and in fact, that's, that's required of us. So, uh, we do sign a candidate pledge. We will not use force, fraud, or coercion. Um, I, I love this party. I love its principles. It, you know, when I transitioned from coming in uh, to the Libertarian Party and, and getting more involved, it was really the, the platform that, that brought me in. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I just think that, that we genuinely care about people. And we are the champions of the underdog. So, um, whereas the Democrats tout themselves as that, I think they really kind of tend to more take advantage of people that are, um, that are struggling in life. And, you know, we're, we're different from that. So, oh, I lost my place. Oh, Eric Bell asks, which member of Congress <laughs> do you most look forward to doing shrooms with once elected? All of them need shrooms. <laughs> All of them. I mean, my goodness, maybe they'll stop with the shenanigans and actually start caring about people and stop stealing from them and stop putting them in prison and stop sending children overseas to die for nothing. Um, and kill for nothing and destroy their lives. Damon Goodner says, so you prefer more drugs, what else? More freedom. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, freedom to do whatever you want. You want to do a, a bunch of drugs, do a bunch of drugs. You, uh, you know, but I, I think it, you know, as I mentioned early on, one of my, uh, one of my kind of passion issues is the death penalty. Um, I'd like to see people not lose their lives, especially if, uh, yeah, I mean, there are way too many posthumous exonerations and that's what really, you know, I used to have that eye for an eye mentality, but at the end of the day, I mean, it doesn't do anyone any good. Um, even if they are guilty, I do believe in redemption. I don't believe that it will happen for everyone but I think it's possible. And I do not believe that the government should have the right to take away somebody's life. Um, you know, but that, or drugs, or freedom. Eric Van Single asks, how do you feel about public schools? Um, yeah, we just touched on that with the homeschooling thing. So, I mean, public schools are um, you know, we're made to believe that they're necessary at this point. It's kind of a, a, a glorified daycare, if you will. Um, you know, I don't know what, what people are learning. Um, you know, my son's 21 now and he has cousins that used to, uh, they used to come over here a lot. They used to live here for a while too, who are a little bit younger. And, um, yeah, you know, they and their friends would tell us what they were learning at school. And they're, you know, even they were like, what? <laughs> you know, they were smart enough to get that they were being dumbed down. Um, and I think if they can recognize that themselves, then there's definitely an issue. It It's really, um, it, as far as public schools, though, go, it's, it's all about passing standardized testing. Um stifling the individual. I just 
you know, I think a lot of us do okay in spite of public, public education. Um, we also probably were kind of nerdy and always reading a book when we were kids or whatever, but, uh, you know, I felt like I got a better education even from a public school when I was a kid than way better than I'm seeing now. Cindy Welch, how do you, hi Cindy, <laughs> how do you feel about the state of Texas Department of Health proposing to ban CBD and backing off? Um, I, I, uh, you know how I feel. <laughs> so I honestly, um, I mean, CBD doesn't get anybody high. Like what, you know, I, they just want to, they just want to ban everything. Um, as far as, uh, I mean, it's a legitimate medicine. So, um, yeah. I think I need to shorten my answers a little bit, y'all. Sorry. Jen Nichols asks, how do you feel about the empire the U.S. is building overseas through military involvement and regime change? That is wrong. That is what creates enemies. I mean, you know, I was talking to somebody today on Facebook going back and forth about how, well, you know, if we do need to drone bomb people, it, we got to be able to do that for self-defense. Well, uh, you know, how about we just leave people alone? And none of that's necessary at all. It's it's not any of our business um, who who's the president where and, and so on. And we present it to the public as a humanitarian effort. And it's not, you know. And you sound like a legit crazy person when you're talking to somebody that you just meet off the streets. And you tell them, like, no, it really isn't what you're being told. I mean, first of all, they... They don't want to feel like you're insulting them, um, which, you know, I don't speak to people that way, and I, I hope that most of us don't, but um, it, it's absolutely not, it, it's not what, uh, what we're being force-fed, and uh, like I said, I need to shorten my answers, but yeah, I bring the troops home, um, stop bombing people. Leave, leave everybody alone. Maybe if we actually had peace, we could uh, trade with people instead of taking their shit. Ryan Chesley asks, what legitimate uses of force do you believe the government has? Um, I don't. Well, none. <laughs> I, I, you know, there was a while, like, when my husband and I got really kind of deeper into the philosophy, um, he had turned anarchist probably six months or so before me. I was clinging to the court system, which to me is bizarre looking back now because I'm like, but it's so corrupt. Why did I think that we needed that? You know, it, it just burn it down. Um, start over. We're, we're being, you know conditioned to believe that we must be governed. Um, yes, I'm well aware that there are bad people in the world. I, I'm aware that there's evil that exists, but the government's not protecting us from it. It's perpetuating it. Um, it is it. It is the, the evil that it tells us it's protecting ourselves from. So my answer, I don't believe there is any legitimate use for government. Um, I don't believe that anybody should have a say over what you do. Roman Gallardo asks, does the LP have movements or plans currently to going on to stop asset forfeiture? Um, I do know there are several people that are campaigning on that in the 2018 season. Um, dang it, his name just... <laughs> Attorney General Michael... Michael Harris, yes. Michael Harris is running for attorney general in Texas. Um, he that, That's a sticking point for him. Uh, Clayton Hunt, that's an issue for him as well. Um, I know there are several other times I've seen, I mean, I see articles posted about it all the time in libertarian groups and so on. Um, 
I think Daniel Berman was just talking about it the other day too. Darlene Monsoor says hello. Hi Darlene. <laughs> Ryan Chesley, do you believe in intellectual property law? You know, I'm still kind of figuring out how I, how I feel about that. Um, you know, there's that instinct that we are, are kind of, it's, or it's not instinct, it's, it's instilled in us. Um, you know, it's a little hypocritical for me. I don't. But it's also a little hypocritical for me to say, um, well, that person stole my idea. You know, I don't know. It, no, I don't. Um, but I, I, I do see my own hypocrisy in that answer. Clayton Hunt, Desiree Lindsay 2020. <laughs> That's funny. Clayton Hunt for everything. <laughs> J. Ramon, more drugs, more guns, more freedom. That's right, buddy. Matt, why is being audacious so awesome? Because on Wednesdays we wear pink. And we have a lot more fun than everybody else. Honestly, though, seriously. So, you know, I'm in the Audacious Caucus, as I'm sure many of you know. And, um, I mean, we had a conference call, what, a week and a half ago or so. And we're literally like on our Discord server, counting down the minutes to the conference call because we just, we love working together. It's great. It's a lot of fun. Uh, it's, you know, I really enjoy it because I've always had kind of outside of the box ideas. Um, I think that libertarians should be loud and colorful and proud. And um, it's nice to connect with other people that believe the same way. <laughs> Travis asks, which county in Texas is your favorite? Hint, Travis. Ha, ha, ha. That's funny. That is where our state capital is, and it's actually a very beautiful county. Um, but I live in Henderson County, which is an hour southeast of Dallas on Cedar Creek Lake. And I really love it here. So I have to go with Henderson. Sorry. Jeremiah says, stop dumbing down our kids. Right, exactly. <laughs> That's on us. So, you know, it's on us to make sure that our own children are well educated. I believe. Co-ops. Homeschool co-ops. Jorge says, you can want peace, but the enemy has a say. I, you know, again, I am aware there's evil in the world, but I do think that if we were to leave other people alone, we'd have a lot more peaceful existence and those less enemies and maybe none maybe that's uh, you know a bit uh, what's the word I'm looking for sorry I'm going on very little sleep gullible um, of me but I do believe in in the absolute that absolute world peace is achievable I just think we're going to have to shift the paradigm change how we think and behave and treat one another Cameron Hernandez, but what about shrooms? <laughs> that does get you high. Why should we free the shrooms, as you say? Um, shrooms actually have a lot of benefits, and uh, there are actually there are a lot of studies coming out now. Um, whereas it was extremely difficult to get studies done on psychedelics before. Um, Tyler, can you help the dogs out, please? Sorry, my dog's over here, like, just making noise. Um, but mushrooms are, are very peaceful. So, you know, there's been studies done that, that uh, psilocybin, which is the, the drug in, in mushrooms, can help you quit smoking, um, can help you deal with depression. They did a study on... Uh, cancer patients who were, um, uh, oh, he's right here. Hudson, go outside. Um, they did a study on, um, what are they talking about? Oh, yeah, cancer patients. And um, they actually felt, felt better about imminently dying soon. Um, they say that psilocybin actually repairs brain cells, um, repairs broken connections, and so on. I mean, it, it's a Schedule One felony right now, people. 
<laughs> psychedelic mushrooms are a schedule one felony and schedule one felony means that um, it can it has a high likelihood of abuse that's absurd <laughs> and nobody goes out and um, you know hear somebody getting arrested for tripping and driving you know so Daniel Berman asked if your house was robbed would you call the police you know it's really hard to say in that I've n I haven't been in that situation I don't think so um, I mean, if I was in it and like probably about to, uh, you know, thinking I was going to die soon or something, I, I have great neighbors. I, you know, it's kind of a, the beauty of community. Um, I saw a snake in my garden when I was watering one time and screamed so loud all the neighbors came out. I, I, um, I don't think that, I think that calling the cops would make it worse. Um, and... Yeah, I, I just don't really think I would call them for much of anything. I, I fear them more than I want their help. Jorge says, uh, but if other countries don't leave us alone, then what should we do? I think what we should start by leaving them alone. We are a very young country. We actually came in and, and, and took the land from other people. Um, that's not fair. <laughs> it, we're, we're bullies. I mean, perpetually. So, I, th I think, you know, why don't we bring our troops home, leave people alone, um, see how that goes. And I think all of our purported enemies would likely disappear. Um, we're such a young country. It's, it's, it's not like people are like, well, you know, we're, we're told, oh, they envy our freedom. No, we envy their oil or their poppy fields or whatever resource of theirs they want. So I think that if we leave them alone, you know, there might be a generation or two of understandably very angry people who might want to get back at us. I mean, we're breeding terrorists. If you really want to be honest about it, you go and bomb somebody's family. What do you think they're going to want to do? Um, they're not going to love you. <laughs> if we quit ruining people's lives, we might see a paradigm shift. And so hopefully people would just leave us alone. What can the government do to protect us from radical Islamists? Same thing. Um, you know, what makes them radical? And that's a whole other can of worms there. Um, your religion doesn't... Yeah, okay. I'll save that. That's a whole, that's a whole philosophical discussion. Maria asks, I may have missed it, but what are you campaigning on? Um, again, my kind of top three issues are ending all wars, including the war on drugs, domestic wars, uh, waged by the police against the citizens, um, all wars overseas, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, ending the death penalty. And, and I'm, I am running in Texas, so that's really kind of a big, big issue. Um, something that needs to get talked about and something that needs to get to voted on and um, opening the borders, allowing open immigration. <sighs> Kenneth says, I can't vote for you, but it's great to listen to free thinking ideas. Oh yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> That's really nice. I, you know, I, I enjoy, uh, conversing with like-minded people and, and learning from people that do think differently from me as well. James Pace asks, what do you see being the biggest challenge for the LP besides not being included in the mainstream debates? Um, I think there are a lot, a, a lot of things, a lot of factors. I mean, we obviously don't have the, the big money of the old parties, uh, but uh, what what we could be doing differently, I think, is drawing more attention to ourselves. And I'd mentioned earlier that um, I'm in the Audacious Caucus. That's it's a that's kind of a huge part of um, what we believe in the Audacious Caucus is that we should be unabashedly loud and passionate and free and libertarian, and you know set ourselves apart. I, I think that we're way too stuck on trying to emulate the old parties and that's not getting us anywhere. 
it certainly won't get us any recognition. Um, we're just going to look like kind of the little brother that tags along and gets left behind all the time. So I think, um, I think we need to run some really dynamic candidates who definitely stand out from the status quo. I think we would um, highly benefit from, um, from doing something completely extraordinary and bringing attention to ourselves. And it would be nice to have the money that the old parties have, but I mean, a lot of that's really dirty, like lobbyist money and stuff, so meh. <laughs> Dane Posner asks, besides state power, what do you think is the biggest threat to individual liberty in the U.S.? Um, I don't know. That's interesting. Maybe we can go back to public schools on that one. Um, that is a, that's a good question. I think that, that, you know, the, the walls we put up as a result of our indoctrination and programming that continue, it starts before we enter school and continues well after. Um, but that, that's extremely dangerous. It's really hard to break those barriers down. And uh, nobody wants to admit they've been duped or lied to. It makes you feel stupid. And it's, it's a tough thing. And it's really tough to let go of a belief you've held for, you know, all of most of your life. So that, that might actually be the biggest threat is the indoctrination um not yeah i'll have to think about that that's that's a good, really good question jerome calhoun says hello from alabama hello jerome from texas i have family in alabama beautiful state just really really hot like texas Ryan Chelsea, we, didn't need to, we need to explain, we don't need to explain why someone wants or needs a drug. Let's make the argument we should be making. My body is my property. I'll do what I want with it. Well said. Very well said. I agree. Um, however, with the, with the psychedelics thing, a, a lot of that is, I mean, I'm, I'm 40 years old. I remember I bought a Black Crow's cassette when I was like 13 or 14. And they were talking about legalizing marijuana, and I was mind blown. Like, whoa, that's 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 crazy. Um, and, and look at how much time has passed. You know, these are rock stars. You know, but of course, you had you know rock star activists. You had all kinds of activists, people that were out there educating the public on marijuana and, and cannabis. Sorry, a, a lot of activists tell me we need to we need to use the medical term cannabis. So sorry. Um, but look at how long that's taken and, and, you know, we still don't have full acceptance of it yet. So as far as psychedelics, they actually are, you know, they do more good than harm. It's going to be a lot harder to change somebody's mind about slinging heroin than it is about, you no, know, psychedelics actually make the world more peaceful place. People, um, you know, people can deal with their depression issues, whereas uh, prescribed medication makes them worse. Um, so I agree with you, but I also do want to start educating the public about psychedelics just because I see that as being a, a really long road, especially in Texas, especially in Texas. We'll probably be the last to legalize everything. <laughs> Maria Edenbow says, or Edinbow, sorry if I said your name wrong. They make me feel slightly ill in the stomach, but otherwise they're okay. Are you talking about mushrooms? Um... Yeah, they, they do that to some people. I um, that I haven't experienced that. Ryan Chesley says, the police are only there to take a report. The SCOTUS has already ruled. They have no obligation to help the populace. Um, oh, you must be like referring to like if your house is being robbed, like that part of the conversation. Um, yeah, okay. I suppose that's true. They aren't usually very helpful, are they? All right, and we are looking, oh, this was probably from five minutes ago. 10 minute warning, our time will be up at eight o'clock. Um, he said, feel free to continue as long as you would like. Um, 
I mean, I'll hang if y'all want to hang. <laughs> but if uh, if the moderators at Ask a Libertarian, if y'all have stuff to do, don't let me keep you. Mike Shipley, love the scarf. On Wednesdays, we wear pink. Yes, we do. <laughs> I was actually going to wear one of my pink dresses, but one of them was like super filthy. And the other one I just wore in my last live feed. And then, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I figured the scarf was better than nothing. Uh, Sanj Mohip. So, no to Bill Weld then. No, Bill Weld. No, 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 no. That is a huge mistake. I will say, okay, he, I don't know, a lot of you know, Clayton Hunt has been trolling the heck out of Bill Weld, um, kind of making him pay for his mistakes of, of uh, how highly he spoke of Hillary Clinton. And he's handled it pretty well, I will say, which I find funny, actually. But, um, and I like that he's sticking around. He did, he could have just come in, taken the VP nomination like he did, disappeared for four years, come back and, and swept it to get the presidential nomination. He could do that, but he is sticking around. He's at least trying to help. So I appreciate that. I just don't want him to be my presidential nominee. I think we can do a lot better. Um, I'm personally planning, well, there are like four candidates I would support, so that, that's a little, that's going to be a really uh, fun <laughs> campaign season for me, but I already had committed to working on Vermin Supreme's campaign. He's actually going to legitimately seek the Libertarian nomination. I think that will be a lot of fun, um, and uh, I, I really, you know, I don't know. If you aren't really familiar with his activism, um, I would recommend going to Amazon Prime, and I think it might also be on YouTube, and watching Who is Vermin Supreme. He's he's actually legit. I mean, he's not just a political satirist. Like the guy knows his stuff. He's uh, he's great. So uh, Daniel Berman is also running, and he's like one of my closest friends. And I actually, you know really dig what he's doing so far and um i was like stop that <laughs> stop making me want to vote for you um anyway yeah no bill well please peter church asks what is your favorite charity i oh and peter is also running for congress here in texas so check him out um peter i i'm not really sure because i i like i believe in a like a mutual aid kind of society. So, um, I think that, that what we do for our fellow man, what comes a, or woman, what comes across our path that we do to help others, that's my favorite. Um, as far as like a, you know, legit charity, charity, I'm not really, you know, I'm not too sure because I don't get involved with charities very much. I believe in more like person to person mutual aid. Travis asks, how can viewers support your cause and campaign? Oh, well, thank you for asking, Travis. <laughs> um, our website is peaceandlovetexas.com. That's also how you can find us on Facebook, facebook.com slash peaceandlovetexas. We're also on Twitter, peaceandlovetx. So it's all spelled out um, on the website and on the Facebook page. But you can donate on our um, on our website, and that would be actually really helpful. I really actually probably kind of need to hit fundraising a little bit harder. Um, we have a lot of stuff in the works um, that we're looking at coming, you know, at the end of the summer. So yeah, if you can, please help out, Travis, as a professional as always. Thank you for pushing me. <laughs> Joseph Duncan asks if you like pineapples. Not on pizza. I love pineapple, though. Um, my friend Allison Smeltz, she's also in the Audacious Caucus. She posted, I think she was trying to troll some of us. She posted this dish she made recently that actually had pineapple, and it was kind of like a teriyaki-ish kind of thing. And at first I was like, oh, that's blasphemy. That's disgusting. And then, like... When I looked at the picture, I was like, that actually looks really delicious. But generally, just pineapple, like, by itself is the only way I like it. It's really good. 
or with other fruit. <laughs> there is a pineapple pizza caucus, y'all. Dane Posner asks, would you consider speaking out against mandatory practice of school children being forced to recite the Pledge of Allegiance as a member of Congress? Yes. Oh my gosh, yes. More programming. Get them while they're young. Jorge Zayas. I, I'm skipping saying some of these last names because I'm sure I'm saying them wrong. I'm really sorry if I butcher your name. I don't mean to. <coughs> Where do you stand on the rights of preborn people? Um, I personally am not a fan of abortion, but I would never... Uh, try to impose my will on anyone else and I do not believe that the government has a right to do so. I, um, it's not my thing, you know, I don't want to like run out and get an abortion, but I mean, I am married in 40, so that would be a little, you know, but, um, I mean, there, there are plenty of times where the mother's life is in danger. The mother simply isn't ready. You know, I, I, everybody has a different story. I used to be like staunchly pro-life vehemently so and I met this girl and she was friends with some of my friends and we were sitting there talking and she said she was getting ready to go have an abortion the next day and I started yelling at her like I knew everything and I knew it was right for her and she just started crying and she was like I was raped you know I just I can't do it she was like 17 years old it was just really like I don't know it really made me start rethinking my stance on that a lot but um, while I'm not a fan, I certainly don't believe that anybody has the right to impose their will on anyone else. And, um, we all have the ability to decide what's best for ourselves. JC Cook, two audacious candidates, one pending. What do you mean? <laughs> Message Tyler and tell him what you meant. <laughs> Mike Shipley asks, do you have any advice for right libertarians who find left libertarian semantics startling or confusing? I have advice for, for people on both sides of this. Thank you for asking, Mike. This is something that's actually pretty important to me. Um, you know, it, I need a smoke, y'all. Sorry, I'm going to pass look classless, but I don't care. <laughs> I am classless. Um, I think we as libertarians tend to kind of, you know, force people out that don't agree with us. And I, I believe that's extremely wrong, especially when somebody's new. So I don't identify as a, like a, do you say lib social or lib sock? I hear most people say lib sock, but it's social, it's short for socialist. So anyway, I, I'm not in that caucus. I support them. I, um, I think there's definitely a need for them to be welcomed in this party. Um, but on the other side too, you know, I, I've been guilty of this myself, actually, when I got, you know, a little bit, uh, I, I got really deep into the philosophy of, of anarchy, and um, I don't really like that guy. He's a little too right-leaning for me. You know, not cool. Like, that wasn't cool. Like, like, we should, we all start somewhere, and we need to be accepting of, of everyone else. It, honestly, if, if you want to fight for freedom, then the, gov the government is our enemy. It's not each other. Um, I know Mike Shipley, who had asked the question, he is the one who, uh, you know, was really, uh, was really pushing for the, um, the NOLA Accord. And unfortunately, we didn't get it through. But over half of the delegates voted for it. So I think that's a really good sign. A lot of people just had some stumbling blocks with some of the verbiage and stuff, but we've got until 2020 to work through that. So, and I hope to see people working together. The Audacious Caucus is actually a pretty good example of what we call bottom unity. And some people have asked me, what does that mean, bottom unity? It, so it's uh, left and right. Top is top left, top right, Democrats, Republicans, authoritarian bottom is libertarian so you've got your kind of more left-leaning libertarians and your more right-leaning libertarians there's no reason we can't all work together um when the libertarian socialists say they believe in in socialism they're not talking about forced socialism and and i'll admit 
when that caucus started, I too was like, oh, I don't know about this. But I actually listened to what they had to say and kept an open mind. And so for me, um, I think that's it's important for all of us to listen to each other. And I mean, I can be a hypocrite on that sometimes, but um, I think it's it's important. And actually, Mike Shipley will be doing an AMA on Ask a Libertarian on, I want to say, August 11th or 12th. Um, I think it's the 11th. It's that Sunday, like the second Sunday, um, where he'll be answering any questions about bottom immunity. I know a lot of people have been asking my husband and me as well. And I think that's great because it, most of these people, if not all, that have approached us are keeping an open mind. And I, I like that. We need to work together more, not against each other. The government is the enemy, not each other. Fight the state. Daniel Berman, should the... Government use force to ban circumcision. No. <laughs> um, the government shouldn't ban anything, regardless of how you feel about circumcision. And I, I think that um, you know there have been a lot of a, a lot of uh, activists coming out in educating people about circumcision. So I think that parents hopefully should have the ability, especially more going forward, to make an educated choice for their own child. Um, do you think the unborn have a right to live? If no, why not? That's Jorge Zayas. I'm sorry if I get your name wrong. Um, that really, it, you know, I've already said how I feel as far as the government goes. Um, that's really more of a philosophical debate that's... Uh, for another time um, you know it's not a congressional is issue to me it's not a political issue Daniel Berman do you have any evidence that will lead to the arrest of Hillary Clinton I wish <laughs> do you <laughs> ask a uh, Bill Weld or wait a minute he'll just vouch for her Oh, and um, this is my Mark Miller koozie. He uh, ran for a railroad commissioner in 2016 here in Texas and got us the 5% we needed to retain our ballot access. So, yay, Mark. He's a hero to us. Um, Jorge Zayas, again, I'm sorry, says, So, now no one should impose their will on anyone else. Does that mean serial killers should be allowed to go on killing? No. Um, you know, they are taking a life. I still, and, and that's a really interesting question. I'm still trying to figure out our current prison system is obviously extremely broken and I'm still really trying to figure out what I think would be a better solution. Not that what I think is, is what's actually going to come into play, but I think it's something that's important for us as libertarians to talk about amongst ourselves and, and kind of expand philosophically on because that, I mean, it's, it's tough. But I, I don't know what the solution is to, what the better solution is, alternative is, to our current prison system. Okay. Okay, Travis Hallman, how can viewers that support you, ca support your cause, give you support? Are you allowed to receive donations from out of state? Yes, we are. Um, and again, again, our website is peaceandlovetexas.com. You can donate on there or um, sign up to volunteer. We'll get you added to the mailing list. Um, that would be really super awesome. We do have some stuff we're working on. We're, um, we'll be going to Galveston in... Um, on Labor Day weekend, where we're anticipating a huge crowd, there will be, it's called Canifest. There will be a lot of uh, libertarian speakers. There'll be music. There'll be art. There'll be all kinds of cool stuff. I'm really looking forward to that. Um, that, and I've got some other things in the works with some other congressional candidates. Try to spread that message. Jean Garoche. Do we need taxes to make roads? Nope. <laughs> I mean, look at what Domino's is doing right now, you know? 
kind of cool, don't you think? <laughs> I was uh, I was out in Van, Texas, which is outside of Canton. I don't know. It's been a couple of years. It, it was like right after there were a lot of storms and stuff, and there was a guy out there just fixing the roads himself. And I asked him, like I stopped and asked him, "Do you work for the city?" Because he didn't look like it. He looked like he was. It was just his own personal equipment. And he's like, "No, we just fix our own roads." Um. You know, we we know that if we want roads, we'll make them. I mean, animals make roads. <laughs> Mike Shipley said it's August 12th. Okay, thank you. Um, that So, yeah, come back to this page, the Ask a Libertarian page. Um, Mike Shipley will be answering questions on bot immunity. And, um, and the day before his, Clayton Hunt is also doing an AMA. So... It's like an audacious weekend on Ask a Libertarian. Cool. <laughs> Dane Posner asks, what are your thoughts on automation and its oh, a impact on the labor force? Um, put it this way. I went to a jack-in-the-box that had like a thing where you could like order like on a machine, like a screen kind of thing. Um, or you could go to the counter and order from the person. I went and ordered from the person. Um, it's not working at Jack in the Box for fun. He's working because he needs a job. So, um, you know, but then there are things, automation. I mean, I guess it depends on how far you want to go with that. I mean, things like simple machines and stuff like that, you know, that's not going to replace humans. But um, while uh, there's a lot of room for error, for human error, there's also a lot when it comes to automating certain jobs. So, um, you know, I'm not a fan. I'd re really rather a human have that job. <laughs> Joseph Duncan, do you support the Wingdings Caucus and our desire to make Wingdings the official font of LP Texas? I signed it too. I absolutely do. <laughs> and I know um, Joseph was one of the people working on it with Clayton Hunt and J.C. Cook. Um, they were actually going to propose that Wingdings be the official font. <laughs> um, you know, we get, we get stuck on where a comma goes and all that stuff. So much that it, you know they kind of wanted to make a point there and it's a pretty good one uh, Mark Kibler asks do you think communism and socialism belong in the party okay we've gone back and forth on this mark and I've already I've already addressed it a couple times I believe that anything that's voluntary and people who want to fight the state belong in this party um, as long as they're not trying to impose their will on you or on me I don't really care how they live um, it, if they, if it's all voluntary, it's all voluntary. If they choose to live a different kind of lifestyle, that's fine. I mean, I, you know, I've said a few times I am an anarchist. I've never identified as an ANCAP because I don't really feel that capitalism, um, as it is in the United States currently is, uh, working. It's, I don't think it's very viable. Um, that said, a lot of things can be considered capital. And a lot of that would actually fall under the uh, voluntary socialism umbrella. As long as they're not imposing their will on you, it doesn't matter. Whoever wants to fight the state absolutely belongs in this party. Kenneth Feist or Feast, I'm sorry. F-E-I-S-T. I'm assuming that's Feist asks. If, if you want freedom, the government is our enemy, not each other. If you want freedom, the government is our enemy, not each other. Get me that quote because I th think I may not have gotten it as perfect as you did. I'm really confused. I'm sorry. That's, yeah, but that's really well said. <laughs> I just don't understand the second part of what you said. Sorry. <laughs> Mike Shipley asks, what was your favorite moment from the NOLA convention? Oh my God. One? <laughs> there were a lot. Um, probably the Robert Paulson nomination speech, which I really regret sitting out. 
um, that was that was really cool. And you know, I appreciate all of you that went up there to speak for and represent him when he couldn't be there himself. Um, certain people that got kazooed, I rather enjoyed that too. I really like kazoo. <laughs> um, I think it gets a point across. There were a lot of really cool things that happened in New Orleans, and I think that there were a lot of um, inroads made and, and things like that as well. A lot of the speeches were really awesome too. I just, I don't know, it was, it was really good. Jorge, so serial killers should be stopped, but not abortionists. This is based on abortion victims being in a place where we can't see them. Isn't that a kind of prejudice? Again, that's a whole other conversation um, that has really nothing to do with my congressional run. Sorry. It just doesn't. All due respect. Latanya Whittington, one of my favorites. Um, Latanya Whittington asks, how can Texas legalize cannabis? Keep doing what you're doing, Latanya, um, Corey, all of you, you know, Latanya, you fight the good fight. You uh, put yourself out there. You, um, you know, you tell your story, even though I know it's really hard to tell. I, we're getting there. We're getting close. And I know you do this day in and day out. And Corey and Jay and Candace and all these other wonderful people that you guys brought in. You know, all of you guys are just some of the most, I've got goosebumps, like some of the most passionate people I've ever seen. And I think that because of you guys' efforts, we're going to see it legalized a lot sooner than we would have without you all. So, good work. Brenda Ritter asks, which is better, legalization or decriminalization? That is like something we all talk about all the time. And I prefer decriminalization, but... You know, I hate using the word pragmatic, but I would rather see people out of prison, um, you know, and, and not have their lives destroyed. So if legalization was the only option on the table, I would gladly accept it. We don't want people in cages for nonviolent crimes. Travis Hallman, are property rights woven into the non-aggression principle? In other words, can the non-aggression principle be violated if there are no property rights to protect that property from others using it? I'd save that question for Mike. Um, and that's a good question and something that I'm tossing around in my head as well now as well, which is something I actually really appreciate about the Libertarian Socialist Caucus. They're bringing a kind of new way of looking at things um, into the party and into the movement. And I think that's important because, I mean, we... A lot of us do identify as capitalists because it's what we're used to. Um, and it's it's the only system that we can kind of fathom because it's the only one we know. Even if we have a different version of it that, that we would prefer um, without government involvement. So, it you know, I don't know the answer to that. I think that's a good question for Mike Shipley. And I think it's a good question and I think it's something we should talk about. And I think that was a sticking point for a lot of the people that weren't necessarily on board with the NOLA Accord. Dane Posner, do you feel that the minimum wage should be a living wage? What sort of legislation would you introduce or sign off on to help improve the standard of living for those living below the poverty line? Um... I think that minimum wage is, is part of the problem. I think that that's kind of what keeps pushing things in a direction that makes a, makes it harder to make a living wage. Just government involvement in all in between an employer and an employee, I think, is uh, problematic. So I would not back that legislation. I, I just don't think that that the government should be involved in that relationship that's strictly between, it's a, it should be a completely voluntary um, interaction. Um, and as far as the, those, okay, wait, the other part of your question. To help improve the standard of living for those living below the poverty line. 
I, I think there's so much we could do outside of the box to help improve their standard of living. Um, and the poverty line in, in the U.S. is is a lot better than I think in a lot of the other countries. And that's something that, uh, that I think we need to kind of remember. So a lot of things that are, are considered luxuries to a lot of, of our fellow human beings are things that are necessities to us. Um, but that said, there are a lot of people that don't even have those small luxuries in our country. I think that um, mutual aid is the way to go. I think we need to empower ourselves and each other to actually to help one another. If we remove the government, if we stop ticketing or jailing people for feeding homeless um, or prevent them from building a, a tiny home community to help get some people off the streets, I, I think we would see a lot of a lot of vast improvements. So that's my thought on that. Sanj, Sanj Mohip, who is running for Lieutenant Governor in um, Illinois. When are you and Tyler visiting Chicago? As soon as possible. <laughs> um, we would absolutely love to, especially uh, while you're campaigning. That would be fun, but I doubt that'll happen. So <laughs> we would love to. When are you visiting Texas? <laughs> we have a spare room. You're welcome to it at any time. Joseph Duncan asks, since immigration is on a lot of Texans' minds, what is your 30-second speech to an immigrant to introduce them to the libertarian message? Um, welcome. We love you. Come help us contribute to the community. Um, it, it, I don't know if that was, what, 10 seconds? But, I mean, my husband's been saying for a long time he feels like we should have libertarians at the border with, like, big signs saying the Libertarian Party welcomes you. Um, uh, you know, I think if there were more ways for us to actually get out <laughs> and, and I, I, there are so few of us that are spread so thin and we all do so much and wear so many hats, um, I, we might have a better shot at getting our message heard, but, um, uh, yeah, interesting though. I would like to think about that. What's your what's your kind of stunt speech to bring him into the party? I like that. I'll, I'll think about that. All right, you guys. Um, well, we are over about twenty minutes, so I think we will uh, maybe go ahead and wrap up. So, if you haven't already, please make sure that you like and follow the Ask a Libertarian page. Um, I do know Clayton Hunt will be on on August 11th. Mike Shipley will be on on August 12th. Um, Brian Ellison has also scheduled. And I think I saw somebody scheduled after Mike. I'm not sure. But go to the Ask a Libertarian page and uh, make sure you support them and support all your fellow libertarians. Um, I like to, uh, even if it's somebody from out of state, I like to go and share their posts and retweet their tweets. You just, you never know who might see it. And who it might reach so if we could all do that for each other it would be extremely helpful um you can once again find me on facebook at facebook.com slash peace and love texas um on twitter at peace and love tx texas um and our website is peace and love texas.com we also have free the shrooms page and definitely find us in the libertarian party psychedelic caucus um, and if you're so inclined, the Libertarian Party Audacious Caucus, of which I am a proud member. So, um, yeah, give us a shout. And wait, one more question. Okay, we'll go ahead and do this one and then we'll sign off. Mark Kibler, can people own property they aren't currently occupying and using? Ask Mike Shipley. Ask one of the Libertarian Socialists. It's, I'm willing to work with them because they want to fight the state. I'm still trying to wrap my head around what a lot of their philosophies are, but I'm maintaining an open mind. Um, so ask them. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's something I can't really wrap my head around. So, um, but I'm trying. 
and I encourage you to do so as well. And again, Mike Shibley will be on on August 12th, so I would ask him. But um, I want to thank everybody for your questions. I was like so scared I was going to wind up talking to myself for an hour, so um, I really appreciate the questions. They were actually really good and interesting. Um, thank you again to Ask a Libertarian. You guys are really super awesome, and um, I appreciate that you guys do this. So make sure you all follow them on Facebook and um, stay up to uh, stay up to speed on what they're doing because they're constantly working for all of us. So, all right, y'all. Peace. Have a great night. Thank you again. This was fun.